Hi, I'm Mikhail Golovnia, senior scientist at Salford Systems. And what I will do in this video, I will show some basics of running random forest models, and specifically random forest for classification. Just a few words on random forest. It's a fairly new technology. It's been out there for about a decade. It was developed by Leo Bryman and Adele Cutler. Um, uses a, a large number of uh, carved trees that are grown on an independent bootstrap samples, and it also utilizes variable sampling at each node. Now, I'll skip all of the details of that technology because we have a, a separate video that describes all of that. We also cover it in depth in our training sessions. Uh, but for what normally, for the beginner user, all that is relevant is that you have yet another very powerful technology that allows you to handle small and large data sets and in a pure nonlinear way that allows you to extract all of the useful features and also in many cases uh, give you a very nice uh, predictive power. Random forest is often used uh, on a type of uh, modeling situations when you have so-called large or uh, so-called wide data sets. And the wide data set typically means that you have more variables than observations. And in many cases, especially in biotech industry, uh, the number of observations could go down into the hundreds or maybe even less whereas the number of variables could go into thousands, tens of thousands, and sometimes even higher. So therefore, there is this very uh, natural need to find something that would allow you to extract the most representative, the most useful subset of predictors without being overloaded by the sheer size of all of those predictors. So I'm going to illustrate the basics of working with a ref just to give you some highlights. So what I have here is a Salford predictive modeler 7.0, and I will use a random forest and try to build a model on prostate data. So let me first open data file, scroll down the list of data sets in my folder. That are all available in CSV format. And by the way, if you have other statistical formats, you can always pick the one that's right for you. In my case, it's ASCII, the simplest. And the data set itself has a name in here, prostate2.csv. So I pick the data set, I click open. Uh, what happens in this data set, there is a 772 records. And those are individual tissue samples. And all of those tissue samples were run through a mass spectrometer to isolate 111 different uh, mass bands. Again, the exact details are not very relevant at this point. The point is that this tissue sam the, the tissue samples were taken from uh, that the different types of lesions, there were like benign ones or non-cancerous ones, and there were two types of uh, malignant ones. There's a malignant cancer type 1 and malignant cancer type 2. And we're trying to build a classification model using random forest that will try to predict the type of cancer based on these individual mass spectra bands. And there were also two variables here, Z1 and Z2, that are character, uh, some kind of uh, sample tissue ID identifier, and those are there just for informational purposes. So we will not be using them in modeling. The view data button here allows you to peek inside of the data set. So as you can see, target comes first, followed by some of these uh, ID variables, followed by the actual uh, presence of all of these individual spectral mass bands. Uh, the target is coded as 0, 1, and 2. If you scroll down, you may find these alternative values. 0 stands for benign type of lesion, and then you have one of type 1 and type 2 malignant cancer. So I'm closing this window, and uh, next uh, thing, I'll click on the model setup button. And in this case, my 
analysis method of choice will be random forest. Of course, I could have run cart on this or a single tree. I could have tied tree net. But in this case, I'm focusing on random forest. Uh, the random forest will be run in classification mode. Uh, and of course, uh, you can either sort alphabetically or in file order. The first variable here is our target. I'm skipping the ID variables and then pick all of the 111 X's as uh, my predictors. So the next thing after we've set up the initial configuration will be to decide on what kind of testing you want to approach. Uh, and the testing in this case, uh, and that's always a useful good starting point, is to rely on the built-in internal evaluation of uh, performance of random forest based on out-of-bag data. Again, at this point, I'm not going to go beyond and ex explain what the, the out-of-bag data is, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, but this is usually the most useful way to describe model performance without having a specific need to partition data set into learn and test and therefore lose some data from learning, uh, allocated for testing, and so on and so forth. Now, you're welcome to experiment with other alternatives here, uh, but for now, we'll just stick with the simplest and uh, the one that is probably used the mo uh, most often out there. Now, after that, I'll switch to Random Forest tab, and this is where you set some of the key controls of the Random Forest process. It turns out that the technology itself was developed uh, by Leo Ryman and Adele Cutler in a sense that uh, has a very minimalistic set of individual controls or parameters that you can change. Now, and even though you may see a bunch of parameters here, the really important ones is how many trees you're going to build. And by default, it's 500. Just for the sake of time, I'll reduce it down to 200. And the next important parameter is uh, how many predictors to sample at each node. Now, Leo Bryman suggested in some of his foundational papers that based on the number of experimentation and also some theoretical reasons, something like the square root of the number of available predictors is a good uh, default value. In my case, I have 111 individual predictors, so it's somewhere between 10 or 11 predictors would be a good starting point. You can experiment with that number by doubling it or taking a half of it. Uh, but what people found, uh, find time and again that uh, the overall model performance is not overly sensitive to the selection of this uh, number of predictors parameter. Uh, another important uh, parameter is uh, individual, the limit on the terminal node size. And there are some the different schools of thought on what would be the, the right number there. Uh, but one possible uh, approach is to basically build the largest possible trees, meaning that the parent nodes are allowed to have as few as two records. Now, sometimes it may bring um, unwieldy models, especially if you have a large number of observations, and some people do run it on, in those kind of settings. Uh, if you encounter that situation, you may try to increase that number to something that will make the resulting model more manageable. But in my case, having about 700 uh, observations, uh, that's default limit of uh, two records and parent node is good enough. That's it. So I set the model. I set the testing strategy uh, that uses the entire data set for learning. And it also relies on built-in internal out-of-bag validation for testing. And I set some basic parameters of random forest. I click on the Start button. It proceeds by building all of these individual trees. And the end result is presented in terms of uh, so-called balanced error rate, which I will explain in a moment. But first notice that uh, every model here is essentially indexed by the number of trees. So random forest proceeds by building all of these trees independently of each other using bootstrap sampling from the learn sample and also sampling of variables at each node. There is no such thing as the optimal sub-model. The more trees you grow, the better, at least in theory, your model becomes. It kind of converges eventually to some kind of uh, 
statistically stable solution. Some people compare it to tossing a coin. The more tosses you, you make, the, 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 the closer your average to 0.5, things like that. Now, once you have a random forest model, it, there's a lot that happened inside. There's a lot of trees were built, a lot of different things were added, but they're all summarized as this simple balanced error rate curve. Now, what are the things that you can look at? First of all, if you click on the summary button, uh, you'll see a number of different tabs. Uh, one of the tabs is called variable importance. And it essentially summarizes how individual variables participate in model building. Now, to some people, this is the real ultimate goal of running random forest, uh, especially on those data sets that are extremely wide and have unmanageable number of available predictors. Because all you need to do is we'll look at the variable importance and quickly identify the list of all of the available, uh, all of the predictors that were picked as the most influential in separating all of these different target classes. So that's one important result. And the number two, you can always look at the prediction success table and uh, again, the whole purpose of running random forest in the classification mode is to build something that separates these individual targets classes. So you're solving classification problem. In this case, it's actually multinomial classification problem. We have these three different types of cancers, uh, benign and malignant one and two. And as you can see, the original data set has this particular distribution of those different types. And uh, the random forest model, once it's applied to this data set, shows uh, out-of-bag internal validation performance as being 67.59% correct in correctly classifying class 0, 91% in correctly classifying uh, cancer type 1, and 93% correct in classifying cancer type 2. Now, of course, if you had a random class assignment, you would expect on average about 33% correct uh, in the balanced setting. And in this case, we are going way better than just a random uh, picking up of the target class. So we clearly have a good model, the model that performs reasonably well. And time and again, people have confirmed that Random Forest could give you a very good classifier that uh, really captures all of the intricacies of the signal. So to summarize, at this point, what we have learned is that setting up a random forest model is a relatively straightforward uh, exercise. You need a data set. You need to know what the target is and what the potential predictors are. The data set could be very wide. They could have a large number of predictors. They could have a reasonable number of observations, even though usually they tend to have a, a number of observations on the smaller side, because that's where random forest is most uh, kind of uh, most convenient, because the trees are not getting uh, uh, out of hand in terms of their size. And once you have that, you just uh, run it through the software. You decide how many trees you're going to try. And usually it's uh, several hundred or more. You also need to decide how many variables you're going to sample. And typically it's the square root of the number of uh, variables available to begin with. Once the process is finished, uh, one important insight that you can get is look at the variable importance list and identify the variables that are they were picked as influential. Many people use it to identify important genes or some uh, important uh, uh, characteristics of some sort. And then on top of it, you can also use it as a powerful classifier, the classifier that has a, a very good predictive power based on uh, uh, just in general that classification performance. Of course, this is not that it has to be about random forest. Random horror forest has the second important machinery that has to do with the post-processing trees, presenting those trees, uh, presenting additional insights into the model itself, and doing all sorts of uh, extra diagnostics. This will be the topic of uh, a future video. For now, all I wanted you to know is that how simple it is to grab the data set, build a random forest model, 
look at the general highlights of that model and use that model as a powerful classifier. In many situations, that's all you need the random forest for.